Does the 990 form sound familiar to you, but you aren't exactly sure what it is and if it applies to your organization? Well, that's what I'm here for. My name is Athena Kehoe and I am with the ASU Lodestar Center's Ask the Nonprofit Specialist Team. If you are a nonprofit organization that has received tax exempt status, then this form, the Form 990, is an incredibly important document. In a nutshell, the 990 is an annual reporting form that details your organization's mission, programs, policies, finances, and compensation. Most federally tax-exempt organizations must file this form with the Internal Revenue Service each year, and it will be made available publicly for transparency. The first thing to know is do not be late, because you will be penalized if you file the form late. The fine starts at $20 a day, with a maximum penalty reaching five figures. The filing deadline depends on when your organization's tax year ends. The form is due by the 15th day of the fifth month after the close of your tax year. For example, if your tax year ends on December 31st, you must file by May 15th. If you think you might be late, you will want to submit the application for extension of time to file. And on top of those penalties, if you fail to file a 990 for three consecutive years, the organization's tax exempt status will be revoked. That makes the organization liable for income taxes and it means donors can't deduct their contributions on tax returns. So in short, this is a really important form for a nonprofit. Okay, and now let's talk about the form itself. The IRS has several different versions of the 990 form. Your organization's finances will determine your filing requirement. The smallest organizations may choose to file a simplified version called the 990N or E postcard. The majority of nonprofits that file in Arizona are small enough to use the 990N. This version only collects the most basic information about the organization. At the next level up, some organizations have the option to file a different form called the 990EZ. This form collects more details but is still reduced from the full form. And then there's the full 990 form. This is required for organizations with gross receipts of $200,000 or more or with total assets of $500,000 or more. Most of the revenue that nonprofits in Arizona report to the IRS comes from these full 990 filers. For more on that topic, check out our scope of the sector research. On the full 990 form, the IRS collects financial information, details about the organization's governing body and management, the organization's mission, programs, and accomplishments, compensation of officers and key employees, disclosure of certain transactions, and more. 501c3 private foundations have their own form, the 990PF, for disclosing their finances and charitable activities. It's also important to know that not all nonprofits are required to file a 990. Some of those exemptions include nonprofits that haven't yet received tax exempt status from the IRS religious congregations, and subsidiary organizations covered under a parent organization's group return. Finally, there's one more form to discuss. Nonprofits are also required to file a separate form, the 990-T, if they have unrelated business income during the year. And if you are unsure what the unrelated business income tax is, check out this video we made that goes into further detail about it. If an organization receives more than 5% of its total income from unrelated business income, it may endanger its tax-exempt status unless it files the 990-T and pays the appropriate taxes. So to wrap things up, the 990 form is filed by nonprofits with the IRS and made publicly available to ensure transparency and accountability in the nonprofit sector. Nonprofit organizations that are tax exempt under Section 501c of the IRS are typically required to file this form and disclose their income, finances, and accomplishments. For more information, check out the link in the description where we have written an entire article about the 990 form. This video is brought to you by the ASU Lodestar Center for Philanthropy and Nonprofit Innovation. Do you have a nonprofit question? Leave a comment below or visit our Ask the Nonprofit Specialist page to message an expert. Thank you for watching.